Hello there, all you beautiful thrill seekers. My name is Coach Shadogs to Bob, Bob Bill for Theme Parks, and welcome to a big discussion news update today because we're going to use this opportunity to discuss what's the next flat ride for Alton Towers. Now, Alton Towers Theme Park has two operating flat rides at the moment as of recording this in 2020, or the end of 2020. Um, basically, we have Enterprise and we have the Blade. Now, the Blade was the latest development because, of course, not originally opening. However, it was, of course, moved uh, to the Forbidden Valley section after Thunderlooper was removed from the park. So that was introduced along with Ripsaw in 1997. Um, so it was it was pretty much that was the latest flat ride development. Now we've had flat rides come and go in the past. That, that's the last currently operating flat ride development. Uh, but we have had flat rides in the past, the likes of Dynamo, uh, Ripsaw that's now gone. And, you know, I think with Chessington adding a brand new family drop tower, I thought, you know what, this would be a great opportunity to talk about uh, potential flat ride sites. Now, before we get started with all of that, make sure you like, comment, subscribe, click the notification bell so you never miss another YouTube video. If you go into the description down below, you can subscribe to Twitter, TikTok, Snapchat, Instagram, and... We have a Discord server, so uh, sometimes we can share some news on there. If you've got any new stories that you've found online, share it on the Discord server. It's on the general chat. And also, if you go on the voice chat, you can chat with other fans of the channel. And I might pop in there from time to time uh, to chat with fans as well. There's, there's quite a lot of people already on it, so please get into the Discord server if you want to uh, chill out with Coaster Chow off screen as well. Uh, also, guys, make sure you comment down below your questions. If you've got any questions to ask, please get it down below. We've got about a week, or around about a week to go before the deadline, so please, please, please get your questions in. Use the hashtag question before or after your question. There for the 2,000 subscriber Q&A, which is being filmed the day before Christmas Eve and being released on Christmas Eve. And for now, guys, let's start discussing the next flat ride for Alton Towers. So, let's have a look at all three sites and talk about what I think will happen to those sites. So we're kicking off the discussion in style, speaking of the Enterprise, and we've got that in blue, that's like a temporary blue circle to show that maybe or maybe not, but the main site we're looking at here is the submission site. Now this is sat in front of the Oblivion, uh, it operated between 2003 and 2013, it's a chance double swinging inverter flat ride, uh, now of course it used to, the site itself used to host the Energizer, which was the Bone Shaker, the old Bone Shaker from Ugland, and now the Energizer was removed, what must be 15 years ago now, and you know, Submission was a decent replacement, There's, there was many re reviews saying it was rough and, you know, it, ha it didn't have a good rideability. Personally, I had some good rides on Submission, I think it was a really good flat ride, I was I was stoked to get the credit. That's the, the, the slang term, I was stoked to get it. Um, <laughs> but, uh, looking at the actual site, it does look like a decent opportunity to add a new flat ride. Now, what kind of flat ride? I think the options are limited because, of course, um, you've got to look at potential swinging rides like the Zampola Hawks that you see going in at the USA parks. I mean, Lumberjack at Canada's Wonderland, that's the most recent example of the Zampola Hawks. Um, it's like a, a more modern version of Pandemonium at Drayton Manor, uh, but a better version in my opinion. I think they've got a better rideability than the Pandemoniums at Drayton Manor, uh, the Fabry version. And, you know, I do feel like the Zampella Hawks could be a decent flat ride for the park. It's a good family thrill ride, so it's got a bit of a family aspect to it as well. So I think that uh, the Zampella Hawks is a decent flat ride for the park. Uh, now, of course, the reason why I put a temporary blue circle around Enterprise as well is because another flat ride that could add is a Zampella Disco Coaster. And I will come back to the Zampella Disco or the Zampella Disco Coaster a little bit later in the video because there's another site which I think it could take up. Now, looking through uh, the potential route, I think if you're looking at this, is it going to have the Camelback? Is it going to be just a normal uh, curved version like the Navigator at Flamingoland? So basically, is it either going to be Navigator at Flamingoland or Cobra at Chessington or Edge at Poulton's Park? Basically, I reckon they could do both. I reckon they could outstretch the site, uh, close the pathway gap between Enterprise and Submission, and I reckon they could do the queue outside both sites. So have like a nice sort of outstretched um, wide queue line. Not cattle pen really, or not cattle pen as much, but I reckon like a nice um, steel metal fencing military base 
thing outside um, both sites and I reckon they could have a nice disco coaster themed to X Sector whether it's, whether it's themed to the X Sector area or whether it's themed to the Ministry of Joy um, so maybe it's the um, Incarcerator or maybe they theme it to one of the Smiler Legs possibly maybe they could theme it to one of the Smiler Legs um, so or, or it could be the um, you could, they could bring back the correction theming in some way. I know they removed the get correction theming from the Smiler because of you know certain situations, but if they could bring it back in a more family way, I think they could bring some some kind of correction theming back. And if not, I just like to see a Ministry of Joy themed disco coaster. And it's not a coaster; it's a flat ride, but that's the model name, the disco coaster, or it's just the Zampilla disco if it's the uh, curve model and not the one without the uh, airbag, the camel airtime uh, moment. Um, but I think that both attractions would be decent attractions to the X Sector area. Moving into site number two, and this is the Ripsaw site. Now I'm not Circle Blade because it's gone through a recent. Uh, maintenance period over the past season so I think it's not going anywhere for a good few years yet so we're not going to use that as a part of this development but uh, Ripsaw site definitely is something for development now you've got to look at Ramesses Revenge at Chessington that is a host top spin that's been removed for next year for the croc drop the trademark has been confirmed it has been approved it will be called croc drop uh, but I will probably do an update on that separately um, today but yeah, Croc Drop basically uh, is a Zamperla Sky Tower, rumouredly Zamperla, and basically it's a family thrill drop tower going into the Ramesses Revenge site. It's a lot more family, but it's still got the thrill level of, of, of it. And it's kind of like a Magma style, but I think it's a Zamperla version of Magma at Poulton's Park. So I think, now I know they've got the Rogers Bouncy Bottom Burp as part of the new World David Williams for 2021. And they've also got um, the brand new, uh, well, the, the sort of brand new Peter Rabbit's Hibbity Hop that opened in 2019, which is the two versions of Frog Hopper in CBeebies Land. However, this type of drop tower is a lot more thrilling, and I reckon they could have a nice thrill drop tower to entertain the thrill seekers while, you know, the families and the kids go for the Peter Rabbit one and also Roger's Bouncy Bottom Burp when the new area opens next year. So I think that something like Croc Drop would work very, very well on the Ripsaw site. If not Croc Drop, if you can work within the tree height and the fact that they're in the conservation area and work with the similar height, I reckon you could do a nice, more more thrilling drop tower. Not too expensive, because we know that after Darren Brown's Ghost Train, Merlin does not want to make another financial mishap. But I reckon that a more thrilling drop tower, whether it's by Intamin, whether it's uh, a more thrilling version of Magma, I reckon they could do something with that. So I think that a thrilling drop tower or the similar model to Croc Drop, where it's more family thrill, would work very, very well in this site. Another kind of ride that would work well in this site, uh, potentially, maybe you could see an ABC Torbal on somewhere. Maybe one of those. Obviously, I know, I, I mean, I think that Intamin owns the rights to them now, but I reckon that could work in this site as well. But I think that's probably the least likely of the options, in my opinion. I reckon that, uh, I think we're looking at a drop tower if we're going to see Ripsaw get replaced by a permanent attraction. So, I reckon that the drop tower will be the uh, will be the future of this um, site, should we say, for the for the former Ripsaw attraction, and I think that a drop tower would do, whether it's a croc drop or whether it's a more thrilling version, would do this site justice. Finally, site number three on your screen already is the Edge Arcade and Nemesis Subterras building. Now, this is where the Zampilla Disco Coaster with the Airtime Hill comes into effect. Now, this would be my ideal replacement for the Nemesis Subterra building. Project 42 is not coming back, as far as I know. And the Edge Arcade has been around for a long, long time, and I, who, who, I know there's a few people that goes in there, but, you know, who goes in there on a regular occasion? They're not, you know, the Arcade isn't part of the, the theme park uh, sort of development. And I reckon the Edge Arcade will be on its way out. I reckon the Edge Arcade will not have long left. And I think that if they're not going to use the Subterra site, the Edge Arcade, and Blade and Ripsaw for an outstretched long coaster for Forbidden Valley, I reckon they could use just the Subterra and the Edge Arcade 
for the brand new disco coaster. So I reckon, again, that could be the case. Now, another type of attraction they could put in, and don't get me wrong, I do not want to see this after reviews from the likes of Harley Quinn Crazy Coaster and the reliability issues they've had with that. Um, but I reckon you could do a custom outstretched sky warp. Now, I could be wrong. I could be very, very wrong. Uh, but instead of a sky warp, maybe Intamin works with Alton Towers and does like a, their version of a sky warp using the single rail track that they use for the hot racer concept. So if you've got the hot racers, maybe do like a mini version where it's like a sky warp type coaster by Intamin. Uh, so something like the, the mini racer or something like that. And it could even be a dueling one. It could even do a dueling one. But I think with this case, I think it would be a, just a singular one with the, with the out kind of blueprint they've got to work with if we're looking at Subterra and the Edge Arcade. And I think it would be something nice to go behind the, the Nemesis gun uh, theming sort of in front of the Edge Arcade. So I reckon that that would be a good sort of investment for the park as well. So I think that either one would work. I wouldn't go with the Sky Warp. If they're going to go for something like a Sky Warp, I would work with Intamin, not the official manufacturers of a Sky Sky Warp Skyline Attractions. I would also like to see the Zampella Disco Coaster. I think that would be a good family thrill ride, bring the flats back, and uh, it would be a great attraction. You see Chessington adding one, Paltons Park has had one, so I think the Alton Towers could be next for this type of attraction. So either way, I think the Nemesis Subterra site could be up for debate in terms of a brand new permanent attraction and not a Scarefest attraction. So there we go, ladies and gentlemen, that, my friends, is discussing the next flat ride for Alton Towers. Now, you can see a lot of sites on there. They could go the legendary option, especially with the Subterra site, and bring back Dynamo. Now, Dynamo is a Hus Breakdance attraction. It's been closed for nearly 15 years now. It's been removed for nearly 15 years. And I would like to see that back. I, I, I don't know about you guys, but if they're not going to do anything to the building, demolish the building, bring Dynamo back in a brand new way with a brand new updated modern breakdance ride system from Hoss Ride, and I would bring it into the park. You know, you know, they could go retro. You know, once they've got the funds back after the COVID-19 pandemics, you know, calmed down, soothed down, extinct, you know, and they're trying to rebuild the company financially. I think that they could bring back some old attractions, especially if you're celebrating a park's anniversary. Like, if it comes to 2025 and you're celebrating 45 years of the park's history, or they could wait till 2030 and make it 50 years of the park's history. Use the Subterra site, use the Ripsaw site, and use another site, maybe in the World David Williams. Bring back the Yug Bugs or the Bouncing Bugs and retheme them to World David Williams. Bring Ripsaw back and bring Dynamo back. They could do a Legendary Rides package for the 50th anniversary as well as some shows and special events. So it would be interesting to see if they would do that, but I think we could see something on the sites before the 50th anniversary. So even, maybe even before the 45th anniversary. Maybe. 2022, I mean, to be honest, with the rumours and everything like that, I think 2022's main focus is the reopened, or possibly reopened, overhauled Nemesis. But I reckon they could do a full Forbidden Valley area refurb. They could keep the Blade, keep Galactica, but bring in a ride in the Ripsaw site just to give that area a full uplift, along with the refurbished, overhauled Nemesis, potentially. So... There's a lot of different ways they could do this, a lot of different uh, possibilities and routes that could go with this, but in terms of flat rides, those are three particular sites that I could see something happen onto. So, uh, there we go. So, thank you very much, guys, for watching this discussion video on the next flat ride for Alton Towers. Make sure you like, comment, subscribe, and for now, guys, my name is Coach Chow. Keep living the coast life, and I'll see you guys in the next video very, very soon. Take care, guys. Have an Alton-tastic day.